Repairs Universe is bringing you another repair video today. Looks like we're going to be working on the Apple iPad Mini Retina. In today's video, we're going to show you the steps necessary to remove and replace the touchscreen as well as your LCD on your Mini Retina. Before we get started with our disassemble, let's review our suggested tools. Plastic triangle opening tools. Small Phillips screwdriver. A spudger fine-tipped curved tweezers, precision knife set, a heat gun or a blow dryer. Taking a look here at our mini retina, you're going to notice that our touch screen is non-responsive. Traditionally, we'd ask you to go ahead and power your unit down before starting your disassemble, but with our crack here in the upper corner, it's caused our touch screen to malfunction. Let's go ahead and begin our entry into the iPad mini starting with a heat gun or a blow dryer. This will help us soften up our adhesive, allowing us to peel back our touch screen a little bit easier upon entry. One to two minutes of heat should suffice before we go ahead and begin our entry on this very tight seam for our touch screen. We are gonna utilize a precision knife kit here with a flat tip blade so that we can slide it under our touch screen to open up a gap big enough for our plastic opening tool. The continued use of heat as you work around the iPad is strongly suggested. You'll notice here as we tried to enter with a triangle opening tool that we ended up cracking the touch screen even further. Through trial and error we started to realize that our precision knife was the tool most effective for peeling up our touch screen. We continued here with our heat gun and then working around the perimeter of the iPad. Once you start working down the sides where there's less adhesive, it's a lot easier to bring up the touch screen. You'll notice here we laid a triangle opening tool in our path so that our screen doesn't come back in touch with the adhesive we just peeled it up from. Here we're making short work of the other side, still laying a triangle tool in our path until we're ready to attack the bottom adhesive. Before jumping right in, I want to make you aware that there's two antennas, one on either side of the home button. When you're prying in and around this area with both your knife and your opening tool, I don't want you to cause damage to these antennas as you're going to end up replacing those as well. The continued use of heat, as well as a lot of patience, is going to go a long way at this point. Take your time, and the touch screen will eventually peel up. Once we've removed the touch screen from all the securing adhesive, we can fold it over as if we're opening a book. We have four securing screws, one on each corner of the LCD securing it down in place. Let's use our Phillips screwdriver and back these screws out. The LCD is still secured with a small amount of adhesive. We're gonna use a little bit of heat to help soften it up first and then the combination of a couple of triangle opening tools as well as the flat side of our spudger to try to work the LCD up. It is quite delicate, so have patience when peeling it up so you don't cause damage to it. On the home button side, you'll need to recognize the excessive use of tape. Use the flat side of your spudger or your curved tweezers to begin working this tape away so you can successfully remove the LCD. Carefully fold the LCD over and lay it on top of the touchscreen. So now you can remove the ribbon cable connections from the motherboard. Underneath, you will immediately recognize the metal protective cover. We've got seven Phillips screws that we need to back out with our screwdriver so that we can remove this protective cover to access our connections. Here's the small protective cover for our connections. It's secured with three Phillips screws that we can remove quickly. And beneath we can pry up our two connections. First here for our LCD, which completely releases it for removal.
followed by our broken touchscreen. Before we get started with our reassembly, let's take a look at our replacement part and notice here that this one has pre-installed adhesive. If your part does not come with pre-installed adhesive, we do send out free adhesive strips with all of our replacement parts. You're going to use your precision knife or a pair of scissors and cut the adhesive to size and shape, installing it accordingly for our reassembly. We can now line up our connector to the motherboard and press it down firmly, making sure that we make a secure connection. Time to now bring in the LCD and firmly secure its connection. Let's not forget our small protective plate and secure it with its three Phillips screws. We can now bring in the larger of the two protective plates and bring in the seven screws that secures it down. Time to carefully set the LCD in place and align the mounting holes at each corner. Bring in the four Phillips screws and secure it comfortably in place. Do not neglect this next step. Cleaning between the LCD and the touchscreen is important before final assembly. Once you set the new touchscreen in place, access to any dust or debris between the two is going to be difficult to get to. Be sure to wipe clean any dust or debris that might have settled during your reassembly. Once you're confident in the cleanliness, you can now peel back the protective strips over our adhesive that was pre-installed on the touchscreen. Also, don't forget to remove the protective cover over the entire touchscreen before reinstallation. We can now flip our touchscreen over and align our edges starting down here near the home button. Once aligned, we can work the touchscreen down to complete contact with the entire base of the iPad, pressing firmly around the perimeter, securing the new touchscreen in our new adhesive. Here we use a little bit of heat to help the adhesive set in place properly. The continued use of even pressure around the entire face of the iPad will help the screen settle down nicely. All of the replacement parts and tools that you've seen in this video today are available at www.repairsuniverse.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter.